putting the F's here, right? Yes, it is. And some people do it in the same. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you don't want to do it up there. The, the auto thrust yeah. light that's illuminated on the FCU, if you deselect it there, mm. you could, by the way, but it's not uh, the typical way of doing it. And then, it'll, and then you're going to get thrust lock because anytime the auto thrust fails, you get thrust lock in the FMA, right? Anytime auto thrust fails, I get thrust lock. When I deselect auto thrust from the FCU, the airplane interprets that as I've had an auto thrust failure and it gives you thrust lock, which is not a big deal. You can clear it by just moving the thrust levers, but it's not te technically the proper way of doing it. Renee, I see you thinking, man, tell me. Yes, correct. These are the alpha protections. This is it, man. This is the meat and potatoes right here. What is what is alpha protections? Alpha alpha floor, alpha max, alpha prot. They're only available in normal law. Normal law. So in alternate law, you wouldn't be talking about this, or in direct, or in or in uh, abnormal attitude. Okay, it's only normal law. Um, now the auto thrust system. Another real common oral question is how many auto thrust systems do we have installed? And the answer is two. Most people say one, and the reason they say one, rightfully so, is because there's only one auto thrust push button, unlike autopilots. Uh, one autopilot, autopilot one, autopilot two, there's two autopilots, right? Auto thrust, there's just one push button. What's not typically understood is that they derive their information from the FMGS, otherwise known as the Flight Management Guidance System. And the auto thrust utilizes the FMGS that is slaved to the autopilot that is engaged. So if autopilot one is on, FMGS one. If autopilot two is on, FMGS two. So the auto thrust will utilize either number one or number two FMGS, dependent upon which autopilot is engaged. And of course, if no autopilot is engaged, it defaults to FMGS number one. one. So how many auto thrust systems are installed? Two. This is my oral. How many auto thrust systems, Joe, do we have? We have two. Huh, are you sure about that? We only have one push button. Thank you for questioning my answer. I'm sticking with that one. Final answer, I don't need to phone a friend. I don't need to call and, you know, <laughs> who wants to be a millionaire, right? I'm going to stick with two, two channels. Um, all right, so as long as you have that, you'll have alpha floor available, all right? So that's, uh, let's see, normal law, quick review one more time. Protections, G-load, pitch, speed, roll, alphas, broken into three, prot, max, floor. Uh, alpha floor, predictive function. Keep in mind, you must say predictive. That is the biggest keyword there. It can skip all other modes. It'll give you toga power, and it'll later on defer to toga lock when we reduce the uh, angle of attack. Uh, it's common. Uh, and that's really the only protection you can override, is, is the, uh, the speed protection. Yeah. So, and I, look, man, and these are great. These questions are awesome. Ask, ask the questions. I, I think a lot of times we don't ask questions because maybe you're like, man, am I the only one that's thinking that has this doubt? And I don't want to be that guy that is the one that's asking the question that I should have known since Private Pilot 101. I tell everybody, dude, ask the dumbest of questions. Just ask them, particularly in this environment. There's no jeopardy here. Who the hell's in here? There's, there's nothing. Like, we, this is 100% for you. And in the sim, same thing. Tell me, Bill. Hey, Bill, VLO plus four, what can you tell me happens on that? Aural over speed alert. It'll give you, yeah, yeah, an aural alert. Aural alert, all right, you got it, thank you. Yeah, man. If every time I go into the sim, man, I tell him, look, if we're gonna screw this up royally, Let's just screw it up right now, royally. Because I have a reset button, so we can figure it out and do it all over again. And I prefer that if you're gonna fall, and let, I mean, let's just do it in a controlled, contained environment. And so, that's the way I run it. I know some guys are, that, that's one of our pet peeves, you know, educator turned examiner. Can't stand that, hate that. But um, ask away, I guess is what I'm getting at. Ask away, all right? So, all right, hey, we'll take 10.
uh, recharge our coffee cups and what have you, come back. We're going to do alternate law, direct law, abnormal attitude law, and finally mechanical backup. I'll try to get through all of that before our next break. And then we get into some juicy stuff with operating the plane, uh, which will be via a sim. You're, I'm going to put the sim up behind me. We'll do a flight from Fort Lauderdale to Orlando, and I'll tell you everything in the FMA uh, so that ultimately you can begin to predict. I always say the idea is to have a level of competence that is actually confidence. <laughs> it's a little bit higher. You're confident, and the way to have that really is to predict. You can literally predict what the plane's going to do next, why it's doing it, and not so much what's it doing now. So that's hopefully where we end the day for the most part today. Take 10. I'll see you back at 1030.